Welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham, and in this video, I'm going to show you why a scatter brush can be a better choice than a pattern brush as we make this Mardi Gras bead necklace. So I'm going to start with a single bead that's made out of three vector shapes. You can see it's just a circle with two smaller ellipses forming a shadow and a highlight. So what we want to do is take this bead shape and string it around this path here. Now you would think that the obvious choice would be a pattern brush, but that doesn't really work the way we want it to, and I'll show you why. I'll select my bead object and drag it into the brushes panel to create a brush. I'll choose Pattern Brush and click OK. I'm going to leave all of these settings at their defaults and then click OK to create the brush. Now I'll select my path and apply this brush, and it looks pretty good, but there's a problem. You can see that the highlight follows the path of the brush all the way around rather than staying on the top of each bead the way you would expect if you had a light source coming from the top. So I'm going to change this path back to its basic appearance and then drag this brush to the trash to delete it. I'll drag the objects into the brushes panel again, and this time I'm going to choose a scatter brush. Now normally a scatter brush does what it says, it scatters the object along the path randomly. I'll click OK, and then I'm going to leave all of these settings at Fixed. With a scatter brush, you have the choice to specify the amount of scatter by these various options. But again, I'm going to leave them all at Fixed, and I'm going to leave the numbers over here at their default settings as well. The one thing I do want to pay attention to, however, is the colorization method. I have another quick tip video on colorization, which goes into detail, but for this brush, I'm going to choose Hue Shift as my method. The key color used is the main part of the bead here, just this middle color. I'll click OK to create the brush, and once again, I'll select the path and apply my new scatter brush to it. And now you can see that the object doesn't really scatter, but the highlight stays in the same place at the top all the way around. Because I chose Hue Shift as my colorization method, I can change the brush color to anything in my swatches panel. Now, depending on the size of the original object that you use to create the brush, the spacing might be a little tight or a little loose, and you can change that by double clicking on the brush itself to edit its options. So I'm going to go to the spacing field here and then just move this slider up a little bit. And if I have my preview button checked, you can see that that airs it out a bit. If I think that's too much space, I can add a specific percentage or just use my up or down arrow keys to adjust the percentage until I get the look that I want. When I click OK, I get a warning message telling me that this brush is already in use and asking me if I want to apply those changes to the existing brush strokes. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to click Apply to Strokes. I'll just hold down the Option key and drag out a copy of this brush and change its color. Now with a necklace, of course, you're going to have a strand of some sort holding the beads together. They won't just be floating in space like this. So we can add another stroke using the Appearance panel. So I'll open the Appearance panel and I'll click Add New Stroke. Here's the original stroke with a scatter brush applied and the new stroke is on top. I'll increase the stroke weight to two points and let's see how that looks. I'll zoom in here and we can see a bit of a problem. That new stroke I just created is on top of the other one, which is getting in the way of my beads. So all you have to do is go back to the appearance panel and drag that new stroke below the original one. From here, I can change the color of the strand using any swatch that's in my swatches panel, or if I hold down the shift key while clicking this swatch, it brings up the color sliders. So I'll change it to a more gold color. That's a little bit too green, and that looks pretty good. And now I can just press the Escape key to dismiss the color sliders. So there's my string of beads made from a scatter brush plus a stroke that I added via the Appearance panel. You can duplicate the strands, change their shape, and change their colors to achieve a festive group of beaded necklaces.